Okay. Uh, well, welcome. Thanks for coming to our um, session here. Uh, I'm Daniel Crook. This is my colleague, Manuel Silveira. Uh, today we're going to talk, uh, you, you heard if you were at the earlier session about some of the contributions that we've been uh, putting into OpenStack over the years, particularly with the technical focus. Uh, but there's a lot of other activities that IBM is part of in the, IBM, in the OpenStack community. Uh, so we wanted to highlight a few of those and um, point, how you, point out how you yourself might get involved in the community uh, based on some of the lessons we've learned. Um, so code, obviously, you, you can't have an open source project without code. Um, so it's, it's clearly the most uh, obvious and clear indicator of both the vitality, but also the contributions that are going into a community. Um, and we, we've certainly done that. But so we'll, we'll focus, a, we'll do a quick overview of those features that we've released over uh, the past OpenStack releases and uh, what's gone into Juno. Uh, and then we're going to work into um, the activities uh, that surround that, that help build out the OpenStack community. And as I mentioned, uh, let you uh, learn some of our lessons for, for getting involved in the community. And uh, finally, um, because IBM is such a large part of the community, one of the eight platinum sponsors, we want to hear what your uh, opinion is for how OpenStack might uh, better drive the next release. Uh, so looking forward to the next summit. If there's some features um, in particular that you think that we're well suited for, um, obviously we can come up with the requirements and see what we want. But of course, we want our customers to, to help us drive those requirements as well. OK. Um, and we, we do have quite the direct line into the OpenStack community. Manuel and I both work for uh, open cloud and uh, open standards, open source, and uh, performance. So um, if you talk to us, find us you know, at the session. We'll be here all week. Um, just you know, informally or informally, if you want to have a meeting with us or just chat with us, uh, just find us. And we're, all, of course, on Twitter as well. So if you want to follow us and uh, after the, the conference, find us. You can do that as well. OK. Um, so why are we at an OpenStack conference? Why are we involved in OpenStack to begin with? Um, IBM uh, has, has been uh, rapidly adopting the cloud. And we quickly realized in our, our early cloud efforts that uh, open source is really the way to go when it comes to cloud. Uh, there's just so many vibrant projects out there. And there are so many communities uh, that we can, we can build on, uh, which helps us focus on um, not so much the plumbing infrastructure of what we do, but focus on our customers. So uh, we want to be able to build a foundation on which to help our customers innovate. Um, so at the um, software-defined environment or data center, the infrastructure is a service level. Uh, we are quite involved, of course, in the OpenStack community. But also, if you've seen some of the other um, organizations that have been part of this, uh, also Open Daylight, Open Flow, and uh, some of the other standards that go into defining the data center, OSLC and uh, ISO for managing the life cycle of those, those cloud resources. Um, you may have also heard about Cloud Foundry. There's been a couple of sessions. That's another community that we're in. Um, and around that, there's a lot of services and run times uh, that run on top of Cloud Foundry or Bluemix, which is our distribution of it. So jQuery, uh, Chef, um, MongoDB, Node, and of course Java. We have, we have uh, lines into all of these communities, and we, we, we bring them into every part of our uh, cloud infrastructure. And um, finally, um, in the software as a service tier, uh, what we call the API economy, we're deeply involved in defining the, uh, the standards that are there for the mobile applications, for the web applications. Um, so for example, the HTML5 standard, I believe just last week that, that went gold. Uh, we've been a part of that for, <laughs> <laughs> finally, we've been part of that for 20 years. And, <laughs> Um, that's something, of course, we have another more deep roots into and, and a lot of folks on our team, too. So uh, we're in all these communities, not OpenStack, and, but you know, if you have uh, any sort of interest in, in uh, helping IBM guide our participation there, you know, come talk to us. Um, so it, all bringing it together, this is what we call our open cloud architecture. We're building the entire set of IBM offerings, and you'll hear some more in the later sessions, on top of open source, everything we do. OK, so I'm going to hand it over to my colleague, uh, Manuel. He's going to give us a summary of what we've been doing, particularly over the history of OpenStack and um, into Juno. Yeah, so we've been working with, with OpenStack for a couple of years now. And 
what IBM has done is actually really interesting, right? We've moved from, from Essex where we had uh, a, a single core contributor and a, a couple technical contributors and we've been going to moving, moving on. And as you can see, the, the, the number of, uh, of IBMers working on this has been growing steadily every couple, uh, every, every release. So we've gone from, from Essex, where, where the big contributions were, the, the, the storage enhancements, which we've always been a part of the, the, the Cinder work, uh, the, the translation, uh, and again, from 54, then to Folsom, we almost doubled it. And we started, we continued working with the store, with the Cinder work. We continued doing, uh, we continued growing. So the core, con core contributors went from, from one to four, uh, and the number of commits started growing steadily. Uh, and uh, at Grizzly, you start seeing that we, we start picking up momentum within IBM. So uh, we go up to 270 total IBMers working on this. And this is really, if you look at the chart of, of contributors, these are technical contributors, not, not really, this isn't counting management and, and, and executives. This is actually like, like people working on the code. And the big contributions here were the, the, Nova, the Nova design features and, and the API stability. Uh, and again, commit starts, jumps way up from 181 to, to almost 1,000 uh, commits. Uh, but then by, by Havana, the IBMers again, again are jumping. A uh, hundred, hundred more people are doing it. The, the core contributors goes to thir 13. The, the technical contrib contributors go to 85. And, and we start seeing like this momentum within the company. So now we have uh, dedicated teams within, within actually our organization that are doing that. Uh, Vince is here. Vince actually manages the OpenStack development team within IBM. Uh, and then when we got to Ice House, we're now like the, ten, the technical contributors is 107. The, the, the IBMers, we're, we're reaching a, a, a sort of a, a steady state with the number of IBM contributors. Uh, but the number of, of commits is actually continues growing. So we're, and now we're focusing on, one of the big things for me is when we, when we went to talk to customers, uh, the big issues, you know, the, the customers that IBM talks to are, are like the big existing enterprises. And the big, and the issues that we hear, the questions that we hear aren't about the, the new cool features, the new cool things that, that, ever, that the community is excited about. What they want is like these boring things that they just need to work. So the big focus really was in authentication and security. So integration to LDAP, if you guys remember from, from Grizzly and Folsom, integration with LDAP was nominal. And it, it technically was integration, but it really wasn't, uh, really wasn't, basically it, it used your LDAP as a data store, like, and they treated it like a data, like a, like a relational database. So nominally it was an L, it was integration, but it really wasn't. Well, in Icehouse, all that stuff was brought in. So it was a real, you could actually use federated, federated federation, you had user accounts, you had real integration. So IBM has been moving towards things that are important. Uh, the other big things that we're doing is the, the quality assurance. I mean, we're, we're a company that really focuses on stuff like that, where it matters, where our customers expect reliability and they expect uh, certain stability standards from us. So if we're working on something, we usually go in uh, on two sides, right? On one side is exciting, cool features that are coming out, uh, leverage our technologies, leverage our uh, the other products that we have, but also on the other side, we're trying to make things more stable and make them better for, for in general, for the community. Okay. So looking at Juno, in Juno, uh, things again, we continued with this enterprise secure, with, with enterprise security, with our, our contributions at Keystone. This is, so this is sort of a, a just a high level, uh, high level uh, talk of the chart about what we did at Juno, but we continue to do like these these core key things that are very important to the to the to OpenStack, but aren't really sometimes people don't think about. They just assume that somebody will fix them. So we are doing that with block storage. We continue to be the leaders in the Cinder development uh, with the user experience. Uh, if you remember that with Horizon, we've been adding a lot of the JavaScript improvements, the user interface improvements, uh, the inter and again, internationalization and, and simple usability. This is the stuff that we worry about and this is stuff that we get done. Uh, with the compute management, 
the, the Nova APIs were, were, that was actually a problem, right? As you were moving between releases and then the API was changing. So what we did is we actually spent a lot of time working on that. And then with the interoperability, I mean, with the REST stack, uh, we, we don't often talk, think about, like when, when, a cus when, a, when a company or somebody releases something that's called OpenStack, what does that mean? There's so many variables, there's so many variations. How do we actually, how do we actually know that that's, that's compatible? How do we know that your environment will work with my environment or my code that's written for, for OpenStack here? How do we, how do we prove? And so with, it, with the work that we've been doing with Interop is, is stuff that, that's actually used, that, that will create a, an application that will actually verify that your, your stack is compatible. And so again, the total IBMers, like I said, we're getting, we were reaching a steady state. In ISOUS, we had about 380. Now we have 400 uh, contributors. The, the number of commits went up again from 1,500 to 1,600, and the core contributors is up to 15 now. Um, and, the, and the total uh, technical contributors, 109. Okay, uh, just go back a second. And you know, the key point, too, is we heard all of these requirements from, um, from our customers. You know, some mm -hmm. of it, obviously, was internally generated. So anything that you see missing in OpenStack, anything that prevents any sort of enterprise readiness for you, uh, please let us know. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and this, this can be anything, I mean, earlier Sean and Phil gave a presentation about uh, the interoperability between in x86 and other platforms uh, with OpenStack. And this, these are concerns that are, that are valid and very real to a lot of customers. Uh, the problem is that there's, all, there's so many concerns, so many things that are out there. Uh, we just want to focus on, on stuff that can help everyone. And so th that's one of the areas where we're also working on. So, IBM is really, I mean, I joined IBM 14 years ago and I've been working 12 years with Linux and Open Cloud. And in this time, when, when I started IBM was when IBM made the $1 billion commitment to Linux. Uh, and at that point, that was a big deal, right? And there wasn't a lot of uh, companies, there was either closed source or open source was, was beginning to, to get, get, get a lot of uh, get a lot of visibility and, and start grabbing some, some headlines. Well, when IBM committed a billion dollars to Linux, IBM basically made it clear that our commitment to this open technology, this, this open platform, the open base, was, was really the future. And it was, a, it was big news back then, in, in around 2000, 2001. But now, it, it's, it, it's, it's expected for big companies to contribute back and give back to the community. And so you, you see Apache, we, it, when was it, in, in 90? Yeah, and that it, was one of the very first large enterprise mm -hmm. open source collaborations. So this is really where we cut our teeth and set a lot of best practices for other open source communities as well. Yep. And then uh, in 2000, around 2001, we open sourced the Eclipse framework. Uh, uh, yep. And, then we st and, and the other thing we started doing with Eclipse is that we formed a, a, a consortium and we create a foundation to manage, to guide the open source work. And so this is something that, that you see that IBM starts doing, starts learning. And from that, we've actually moved to this new open cloud environment. And in this open cloud world, this is, we're taking those lessons, the lessons from, from Linux, the lessons from Apache, the lessons from Eclipse, and we're moving forward because we think, well, we know that that's the right way to go forward, right? So recently, uh, we announced last year that we started working with Cloud Foundry. We, we, we started forming an advisory board and the foundation we recently announced that we're gonna start, uh, start creating. Yeah, uh, next week or so that should be. Yeah, next finished. week or so that should be uh, uh, finalized. Uh, and again, we, we specifically in our team, we have uh, uh, an organization, a peer manager of Vince's, Vince's that actually uh, uh, owns Cloud Foundry development within IBM. So we have, we're serious about this. Uh, again, Node.js, you can... Yeah, well, and in both these new emerging communities, um, we're now in a different phase, um, starting with advisory boards for both communities. Uh, we've long supported Node.js uh, within IBM on top of Bluemix, which is our platform as a service built on Cloud Foundry. Um, and we're also involved in the Docker community, also working on an advisory board, uh, bringing our lessons to these communities that we honed in Apache, Linux, and Eclipse, and more recently in Cloud Foundry. 
Um, and we've got several contributors to Docker, um, Phil being our representative here. Um, yeah, and okay. So <clears throat> how, what are we doing with, with the OpenStack Foundation? Uh, and so really our commitment to OpenStack really goes beyond the development of the code. Uh, we've, been, uh, we've, we've done platinum sponsorships uh, man, it's hard to read from that side. Yeah, sorry about the glare. Yeah. Uh, do you want to talk about this one? Yeah, so, so this is really where we're, we're talking about the OpenStack Foundation, right? So this model is repeating. And for OpenStack, we've been involved as the Platinum Sponsorship, one of the, uh, the only eight Platinum Sponsors. There are also almost 20 gold sponsors and 80 corporate sponsors, which is the gradation that if your company wants to be involved in OpenStack, uh, you can start there and, and move upwards. Um, another key point uh, that I think we, we didn't mention in the Linux community is that there is, um, actually, sorry, that's the legal one. But um, yes, the advisory boards, the foundations, that repeating this model of making sure that the open source project, even if its province, provenance is one small company, one small developer, uh, once it's been committed to open source, uh, you know that it will be guided towards a collaborative model, uh, that the one uh, driving developer that may have produced the community uh, will not just shut down development. So if you've made investments inside of that um, open source technology, you know that there's a long-term view on it. Uh, so that's key to a lot of what our organization support is, is giving the enterprise guarantee of the lifetime of the project. And uh, we also mentioned that um, there is a deep um, commitment as p being part of a platinum sponsor that you must commit um, several resources uh, in terms of uh, developers and people working full time. And, and we've seen that now growing in the last few releases, uh, being the number two contributor. Uh, if you go to that Stack Analytics page, if you want to go back a few slides, uh, you can always kind of see these. Uh, it's no, it's yeah. the next one. Uh, it's previous. Is it? Yep, nope, back. It's right there. There. Yeah, Stack Analytics um, always shows you. Uh, this will give you an open source, uh, a view of OpenStack in terms of the companies contributing and where they're contributing. Question? Yeah. So why Docker, why does Docker need a foundation for all this code? I mean, yeah. Why does Docker need a foundation? Yeah. Why can't it just live in a vacuum? I mean, I understand in the case of OpenStack, I sort of understand the entire foundation, but it's like, how many, how many of these foundations do you have to join to become members of in particular? That's a good question. Yeah. Just, yeah, it's, 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 it's a good question. Well, uh, yeah, and I'm not. We should be talking to probably Chris Ferris, who's not with us. But um, the Apache Foundation, it's very good at what it does. But there are also different goals for each project that can be solved more by foundations. To keep but adding new projects. Okay. Uh, Joanne? Yeah, what I would add to that, the difference between, so there's so many technologies, and um, you know, IBM, we spend a lot of time evaluating these technologies and trying to think where is their center of gravity, where is their the ecosystem. We see that with Docker. The stuff for the foundation part is because with the foundation, um, open governance, well, what do you think the F in Apache Software Foundation stands for? I mean, it's, it's got all the governance you need. But Docker does not have that same governance. Docker no, but Docker can be contributed to Apache, sure. Do you not understand what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. I, 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 yeah, I mean, I don't think it's not what the foundation does. I get that. I'm just saying, why create another foundation? Yes, another foundation as yeah. opposed to contributing to that. Just, and part, yeah. part of that is the Docker, the Docker ecosystem is not necessarily one to go, to go that way. Some of these foundations do not create their own foundation and go into the existing. Um, but, but I guess the point is that IBM can't dictate to Docker That's correct. what they decide to do. Uh, certainly, you make a very valid point that the Apache community has served a vital role. Well, it continues to serve a vital role. Right. Didn't say it didn't. It just it it's serves a role. IBM is participating with Docker in trying to influence it to be open. That we can't to influence Docker, say, you know, you've got to go to Apache or else, because 
because that's not the role. We, we have those discussions. We talk about it. We try to steer the conversation that way. It's not that it makes it, that, I understand your point. But to, to Jeff's point, we can't force them to go that way. So if they're not, if they're going to go it alone, then we say, well, if you're going to go it alone, then we think here are the best practices around. So they're not doing it alone. That's the whole point. Not letting you go it alone. You're saying if you want to go it alone, then you've got a clear foundation for you not going it alone. I mean, it's, it's a circular argument. That's a good question. Well, there, I'm sure we can probably follow up and find the detailed reasons for it, but it's probably not a one-size-fits-all model for, for many of these communities. But I mean, we could take it back and, and see. Well, Linux isn't part of the Apache Foundation, right? Yeah, we'll take it offline. Yeah. So, and continuing with OpenStack, as the conferences have been moving on, as we've had uh, more conferences, we, you can see that we've grown our, our, our presence at these conferences. And so the, the point isn't to say that, that we've gone, you know, from, and at Boston we had at the Essex uh, Summit, we went from one attendee to, to today where we have uh, over 100 attendees. Uh, but the point is that we, it's really, we feel it's really important for us to give back. And the way we give back, and this is at a te as a technologist talking on a technical level, the way that we give back is, you know, through, through social media, through blog posts, stuff like that, videos. Uh, we also give back through, through, the, through the summits, uh, through the summits and through, through meetups, and, and we'll talk about that a little bit. But what we started doing is, as, as, you, start, as you see, we start moving through, from Essex, through Folsom, through Grizzly, at Grizzly, we start being more than attendees. We start contributing. We start having, uh, uh, providing sessions, uh, contributing to the design summit. At Havana, we go to seven sessions. Ice House, uh, uh, 10 sessions. This one, we, uh, 12 sessions. Uh, I've been going to these sin, since Hong Kong. Uh, we've had, I've been lucky to, that, that uh, in all of these, I've had sessions accepted. Uh, yesterday, we did, we did a Docker one. Uh, and, and basically what, what we're doing is we want to give back. But the, the beauty of it is that when you, when you give these sessions, you, you get a chance to talk to so many people, to get so many, so many opportunities to hear what people are doing. And more than that, you're actually able to give them back some feedback. Uh, we, can, we share experiences. This morning we spoke with Red Hat about some of the Docker work that we're doing. And, and it's, it's an opportunity for us to work together, or at least, worst case, we can at least uh, uh, get validation that we're, we're both on a track that, that, that other people find valid. We get some, right. some validation. You wanted to say anything? Okay. Okay. All right, so and, and going beyond those formal uh, involvements in the community, right, so actually uh, signing, you know, contributor licenses and, and spon uh, fun, uh, sponsoring con uh, conferences. Um, We've, we've also been deeply involved in, in setting up meetups in local areas, and so we've, we've developed a set of best practices around this. Uh, here's just a couple of examples of what we've been doing. Um, in collaboration with several of the other uh, platinum sponsors in New York, there's an OpenStack meetup group, uh, as well as in Philadelphia, Boston. Um, some of these are the ones that I've been involved in co-organizing myself. I'm, I'm based in the New York area. Um, so we've had speakers from IBM, we've encouraged uh, partner members like Dell and HP and EMC to be part of these communities and help us uh, really get <coughs> developer mind share around this open source technologies and uh, get people to learn how to use them, how they might leverage them instead of reinventing the wheel, coming up with a, a different project. And um, well, let, let me add that. So we, we see two situations where, for example, in Connecticut, Dan's from Connecticut, in Connecticut, there really was a vacuum of these meetups and, and technical uh, uh, groups. So what he did is he actually started, he found a place where we could, where, where like-minded individuals could get together. He, he organized it, set up a meetup page, like really informally, and got people to sponsor, you know, some drinks and stuff for, for the evening, and we got technical presenters to do. Uh, I'm in Austin. In Austin, that already exists. There's a lot of, uh, of all these OpenStack, uh, uh, Docker cloud meetups. So what we what we did, Vince and I uh, actually presented uh, a couple times at the meetups. We we go talk to people, hear what people are saying. So th the point is that 
if something exists, let's leverage it. We can, we can work with the organizations, present. If we can get a little, little bit of funding, buy some pizza, awesome. If not, there's always a chance to give, give sessions. They're, they're always looking for help with that. And if, if that doesn't exist, there's really no reason why we can't stop, uh, uh, nothing stopping us from, from building these re, uh, organizations. And then if you look at China, there really was nothing there before uh, the, the team, people on the team started working on that. And so the, the point is that this is something that we feel is, is really productive to us because it gives us like feedback, like w specifically with, with Vince and I, we, we can actually talk to people, see what they're, what, what, they're, what they're talking about. And this isn't like the big enterprise customers. These are the u real users, the technical people, and we can validate errors, validate the things we're seeing. We're exactly, and, it's and a lot of these communities are very industry specific. So in New York, we have a lot of financial input that comes into OpenStack. Uh, versus in the Bay Area, uh, mm -hmm. there's different workloads that they're more interested in. And throughout the world, they've got different focuses on what they want to do with OpenStack or Cloud Foundry. And the other side effect of this is every time we've come to uh, these Cloud Foundry conferences or OpenStack conferences, uh, we've taken the talks we've done there, we've brought them almost on a road show yep. to, to basically, if you can't come to a large conference, for example, travel to Paris, mm -hmm. um, we're able to take the talks there and also uh, hone for the next conference. Yep. So for example, he mentioned Austin. The HA talk on Docker we did yesterday, um, it was presented there, mm -hmm. got some feedback, pulled that in. So it all contributes to the, the vi vibrancy of the community. And, um, and this is some nice cross-pollination too. Eric Vindish, if you were at his um, Docker talk yesterday, he came to one of our OpenStack meetups to talk about some uh, integration that research has been doing in, in integrating Docker into uh, the OpenStack community. And, uh, at least um, technologically. Well, and, and actually one last thing that at these meetups is also an opportunity to grow the community beyond what, what is usually considered the community, right? You had a, a ladies night meetup where, where, you know, it was a chance to get, to get people that the women that, that typically aren't, uh, aren't coming to, to these meetups for whatever reason, we were able to, to get technical, technical content. It was a, a really a success, right? Over, yeah. over 70 attendees. Right, reaching out to communities versus mm -hmm. expecting them to come to. Right. Absolutely. Right. Yes. Great, so, um, so to help, if you want to get involved in the IBM community, here's some suggestions and some of the, the actual for OpenStack specific. Um, you know, if your companies, if you have technical interest in contributing to OpenStack, get your individual um, employees, allow them to join the foundation. It's free, um, it's straightforward. Uh, there was mention that there was a couple of boot camps that happened before every conference. Um, I, I don't, I think, what are those sessions called? Do you know, Vince? It's on Sunday. You're on Sunday and you can come and uh, it'll help you get onboarded, help you be able to do, you know, your development, keep your development environment set up. It's a lot of uh, education that you go up to Zach University, that's what it is. Yeah, so you get your, your, your developers involved, start to understand the community and start to see where there might be some gaps where OpenStack may not fit your needs, uh, starting there. And then as they're, they're getting involved with the community, um, you know, contribute in, in, in the small stuff to start, right? Translation is, is obviously something that's very important in the OpenStack community. Uh, reporting bu bugs, improving documentation, and basically, you want your developers to become known in that community as someone who's, who's willing to give to get, right? So if you want to build something, you want to get something out of the OpenStack community, you want to make sure that what you're putting in is, is, is something that's going to help you build on top of it. And it could help uh, what you want to commit in the future. And uh, as we said, uh, meetups are a great way to initially get your company started. Um, if you have somebody that's not, that's ready, that wants to talk, wants to present something at an OpenStack meet, uh, found, uh, summit, but they're not quite sure of the content and they want to get some feedback, um, you know, send your employees there, have them at least attend, maybe get some expertise, build up their own skills. And, you know, if you're also interested and you have a location that's uh, a very good space in a, in a particular city in your market, if you become the person or the organization that hosts those meetups, uh, you can build a lot of your own mind share and your own support around OpenStack. And uh, as you move up this, this participation, get more uh, deeper, you know, if you've honed a few presentations, get your developers to uh, submit abstracts. Um, make sure that the content that other people are submitting is, are things that you want to see. And um, to start your own company's formal uh, uh, 
uh, relationship with OpenStack, you'll want to commit to the some co uh, corporate sponsorship, maybe um, uh, get a booth at a future uh, summit or a conference. And finally, um, this is now where IBM has become, we've kind of worked our way through this, is become an actual corporate member in the OpenStack Foundation. Um, so they have different uh, tiers to get uh, to start with. If you're if you're less than three years old, uh, it's a smaller bar to get involved as a sponsor. Um, and you know, as as you work up uh, to gold sponsorship, and ideally after that, uh, join join us as a platinum sponsor. Okay. Do you want to wrap this one? Yeah. So. Uh, so thanks again, guys. Uh, so really, the, the core of this is that we really feel that uh, it's really important to give back. But when you give back, there's lots of ways to do it. Don't just feel that you have to commit code, that you have to write, get in there and write and fi do fixes or add new features. At the, at the technical contribution level, you can help with the test. Well, with the t IBM helps with the testing, but you could help with the documentation. You could file bugs. You could help, you could help at that level. But then there's also this, uh, there's a couple other things you can do. You can help with the evangelism, help with, uh, with the meetups, help, help with technical submissions. Uh, this is all, this is all uh, valuable uh, contributions. This is something that, that we really need, that if people stay quiet, if people, uh, if people keep this to themselves, it really defeats the purpose of the community. So, so we really, we're really excited about that. Uh, and again, we'll, if you're in New York, if you're in Connecticut, you'll see him. If you're in Austin, you'll see me. If you're in the, in the West Coast, in the Valley, you'll, you'll see the rest of the team. Brussels, Boston. exactly. Boston. So we're we're all over the place, guys. And if we and if you feel that there's that there's some uh, some area that's underserved, let us know. We I guarantee you, IBM has a presence there. And there's a big within IBM. The open part of IBM is big. And technologies like OpenStack and Cloud Foundry and and Docker and all these the cloud technologies are are everywhere within the company. So this is something that even if they're not working directly with that, they're using it. This is exciting stuff for us. And so if you feel that there's an underserved area, let us know and we'll, we'll help set that up. We have jo Joanna and our team is setting up remote. Jo Joanna and, the, and people on her team are, are jo Joan. And, but no, but under your team, they're setting up uh, uh, remote meetups. So this is stuff that we, we want to do, okay? Yeah. Uh, and there's the next one. So there's only there's a uh, one more technical session today, uh, and then uh, and this is everything we did. And there's two more sessions coming up today uh, in this room after this one, uh, and and that's it. Uh, whoever didn't get a T-shirt, we have some extra larges and double extra larges here, uh, and that's it, guys. So thank you very much. Great. And just one last point on the meetup. So we've, I published a blog a few uh, months back um, just on some tips that we've had. So if you go to thoughtsoncloud.com, that's the IBM Cloud blog, um, you can find some details on how you might um, at least make that first step if you want to start hosting and participating in your area.